Uh, and we'll close out with this one. Actual upsets. Montana 13, Washington 7. Let's go ahead and, and hit that. Jimmy Lake and, and that bunch were not prepared for this game. Montana is not that good of an FCS team. And they went into Seattle and put it on the Huskies. Washington could get nothing done in this spot. I I don't even know what to make of it because, like, I, I kept I, expecting... All I know is all offseason, everyone told me, Washington is going to compete for the North. They're going to compete for the Pac-12. They're really good. And I said, why? Tell me why they're really good. And the only answer I got was, is Jimmy Lake's a great coach. It's like, really? It, he... It, He's not good enough. Great coach. He's not good enough to keep Dylan Morris from throwing three interceptions in this game. Montana won this game with 105 yards passing and 3.7 yards per rush. They ran it 34 times for 127 yards. They they just didn't make the mistakes that that cost Washington. So I, I just I mean that was that was ridiculous. So we're not going to spend long on that. Uh, Thursday night, UC Davis 19, Tulsa 17. We're not even going to get into the stats. Here's the bottom line, and I said this in our in our team preview for SBR, right? Yeah. Tulsa returned everybody except for Zaven Collins and Zach Smith, the quarterback. And I have seen it happen before where your two leaders disappear and the rest of the team completely falls apart. Sorry. Tulsa was good last year, but you lose your quarterback and you lose your quarterback of the defense, and suddenly they cannot beat an FCS team at home. UC Davis, again, not that great. And by the way, you know who the coach of uh, UC Davis was? No. Dan Hawkins. You know, used to coach at Boise, used to coach at yeah. Colorado. Like, it's, it's, this ain't in a murals. Like, <laughs> so uh, UC Davis gets that win on Thursday. South Dakota State, 42, Colorado State, 23. Steve Adazio got some problems. Now, I don't know how much to read from this because South Dakota State is and has been really good and they were really good. I mean, they just won a national championship. And I was yeah. just about to say, like, four months ago, they won a national championship. Yeah. So, like, now I did expect this to be a little bit closer because three touchdowns is kind of insane. Yeah, but, getting your ass whipped is not. Losing to an FCS national title team is not the black eye it used to be. Getting your ass whipped by them is different, though. Yes. You know, you're 100% right there. Northern Illinois, 22. Georgia Tech, 21. This is embarrassing. Because this is not what was supposed to happen this season in, in Jeff Collins' what, third year? Like, he was supposed to be building this now. They're supposed to be competing for bowl games. And I'm telling you, I still don't like Thomas Hammock. He, he made a great play call there at the end of the game by going for two to try and get the win because you knew going into overtime, you ain't got the players to be able to compete with Georgia Tech. If you're in a spot and you can go for two at the end of the game to win 22-21, yeah, you got to take that. But, good gracious, Georgia Tech, what are you doing? Uh, East Tennessee State, 23, Vanderbilt That's another three. team that you keep – That hang on, that Georgia Tech team, that's another team you keep telling me. They're going to be good. They, I, don't, it, it, I just don't know where you're getting this information from. I thought – I never said that they were going to be good. I did have the under on them for the season. But I, I felt like – because I trust Jeff Collins. I trust what he was able to build at Temple, and I, I – he but, didn't build it at Temple. He took it over at Temple and didn't run it into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And that, maybe that's, that's the problem. That's is he's, he got a job somewhere where you actually got to build something. Some people can build shit. Some people can take broken things and make them great. All right. That, and some people can't. And some people can't. Some people can, can run something that's stable and that's fine, not screw it up. But they're not architects. They're not builders. They're not planners. Well, the. So. So the Georgia Tech situation here, I, I was trying to figure out because Northern Iowa, Northern Iowa, Northern Illinois had Rocky Lombardi at quarterback, and he only had to throw the ball 17 times. He was 11 uh, out of 17, 136 yards and two touchdowns in this game. I, I, I wondered if maybe it was a look-ahead spot for Georgia Tech, but they got Kennesaw State coming up next week. Like, this was not, like, you're just not prepared. Like, you're, you're not, if you're only putting up 21 points against Northern Illinois, that is an issue. Like, that's a major issue. What I, what I said before, Clark Lee, debut at Vanderbilt, 23-3 to loss to East Tennessee State. I, I don't know... I don't know what to even do with this. I... Like, you can't... If you're an SEC team, you cannot lose by three touchdowns to East Tennessee State. 
East Tennessee State might be like the 15th best football team in the state of Tennessee. <laughs> it's entirely possible. I don't think they're as good as Austin P. I don't think no. they're as good as I mean, like they're not as good as MTSU. They're not like I'm not kidding. Like there's a shitload of directional teams in in the state of Tennessee that are all little. Like I don't I don't think they're good as good as any of them. No, no, they're not. They, are they really just beat not. the hell out of Vanderbilt. I just I, I don't I don't know what to make of this. I feel bad for Barton Simmons from two four seven Sports who who left that job to go be a coach or a, a general manager at Vanderbilt. But good gracious, uh, Birdie said Gary wanted to say thank you for your USC breakdown. Won three bets on that game. Awesome stuff. Hey, props to you. I also won several bets on that one as well. Uh, three games left. Nevada twenty two, Cal seventeen. Uh, Carson Strong, the quarterback for Nevada, is legit. And here's the deal. Cal's defense is really good, but Nevada, even without all the stud playmakers and all that kind of stuff, they have a generational talent at quarterback that they have never had. Jay Norvell is a hell of a coach, and yes. Nevada is going to be good this year. Yeah. Really good. No, and, and so we, I got this question on my on my Saturday live show beforehand. Everyone was wanting to know about Nevada and Cal because I didn't hit it the week the, the early in the week at all. And and I just told everybody, listen, I'm not betting against this Nevada team. I like Wilcox. I'm normally a a cow defender with Wilcox there. I don't think offensively they can score on anybody. I don't know how good Nevada's defense is going to be, but they're going to look really good because this team makes scoring just look hard. Yes. Okay. Chase, hey, Chase and, Garbers, and by Nevada, the way. Nevada, Jay Norvell, and that quarterback, oh, yeah. they're going to be able to score even on a very good defensive cow. I said, I think Nevada could win this game straight up. You're laying points here. That's, I think that's insane. Carson I just Strong. think it's insane. Carson Strong, 22 out of 39, 312 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. Chase Garbers, who has been at Cal for what seems like uh, seven years. Forever. I mean, forever. This guy's got to have like advanced degrees. Yes. Chase, well, so, maybe not. I mean, he could be a moron. I mean, I, I went to school for seven and a half years. Yeah, but you didn't go to Berkeley. I mean, if no, you're in school, at they Berkeley, would not allow me uh, in the visiting <laughs> shop on Berkeley. Okay. Chase Garbers, 25 out of 38 for 177 yards, one touchdown, one pick. I, that inexcusable. Like, Nevada's defense ain't that good. So, this is a Cal thing. This is going to be a problem for them this year. Like, they have to find a way to score. They have got to be – because you're going to run into player, or teams that have players that can break the game open with one play, even against your good defense. And and if you cannot play catch-up or anything like that, you are in major trouble. you got to be able to score. I know we're going long, and I know we're probably going to wrap up soon. We are. We, we have to break out the most impressive team – of all of Saturday, all of the first week of college football, we haven't even broke. We haven't talked about him. He talked about him. Who? Okay, who are you talking about? The Presbyterian Blue Hose gave up forty three points and still beat somebody by forty points. Hey, Kevin Kelly, uh, how how many years until he's a P five coach? Uh, I'm going to tell you this. That was the first name I gave my buddy at Mississippi State. I said, you know how much I love Mike Leach. We, we have established that I want, I'm emotionally invested, I need this thing to work out with him. Yeah. If it don't, I will be the first guy to drive to Starville, pack his shit, and send it to Tampa. Okay, I'll yeah. send it to the Keys for him, and I will go drive to South Carolina, and I will move Kevin Kelly's stuff into Starville. Yeah, I, I think he is I told you, fantastic. I told you, I think this guy is going to change college football Forever, it just it's going to take one of these bad teams that is sick of losing, and some athletic director is going to have the nuts to say, "I'll give him a chance." Because what else do we have to lose? Look how much we get our ass kicked already. Yeah. So, so what else do we have to lose? I'll bring him in, and as soon as he goes to a place like a Kansas or a Vanderbilt and gets those teams to to five and and and, and seven. Then, then he has changed the game forever. All right, team stats for uh, Presbyterian had 35 first downs. They were four out of five on fourth down, seven out of 13 on third down, had 814 yards of total offense, 621 yards of passing offense, uh, held the ball for 10 only- touchdowns by the quarterback. Yeah, 10, 10 touchdowns. That's, that's, that's Fucking the other one. 10. Hefley was 38 out of 50, 538 yards, and 10 touchdowns. That's insane. That's insane. 10 uh, Ten touchdowns. Corgi wanted to hit on Cincinnati. Cincinnati's for real. The only two TDs they gave up were garbage time TDs in the fourth quarter. That was uh, one of my best bets on the Bet US show. Was Cincy yeah. minus twenty three. That is a legit. T- Desmond Ritter probably looked like the best quarterback in the country on on yeah. Saturday, but he was playing against my, Miami of Ohio. So yeah, you know. I, I'll tell you. Before the season started, I had to. 
you know, we talked Heisman guys and stuff like that. Yeah, everybody can have all the favorites. I'll take Desmond and I'll take Dylan Gabriel. I'll take both those guys and I'll ride those horses. I think those they're when the season's over with, they might not win it because they're little guys. But I would I would rather be holding a ticket for those two than some small dinky ticket that doesn't it's not worth anything on on one of these big favorites. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Utah State twenty six, Washington State twenty three, Jarrett. Garantano started the game for Washington State, and I immediately put a bet in on Utah State to win this game. And I know that y'all, <laughs> I know that that sounds horrible and ridiculous. And and it wasn't Garantano that lost him the game. It mm-hmm. was Blake Anderson. Actually, is a good coach. The Arkansas State coach that took over Utah State brought his quarterback with him, brought yep. some defensive guys with him, and completely shifted how Utah State looks. <laughs> Like well, let, let Blake Anderson get a couple of those big, tall wide receivers that he always had at Wash, at, uh, at Arkansas, Arkansas State. Yeah, and and teams that play them, especially out west and that division that they're in, that conference that they're in, aren't going to be used to the kind of size and speed with the offensive scheming that that he brings. Yes, yes, you're you're exactly right, exactly right. And finally, last one that I want to hit on, you know, I'm I'm going to be a fan of UTSA. Uh, this year, U- University of Texas at San Antonio. Yeah. Sincere McCormick, 31 carries, 117 yards. Brennan Brady, 11 carries, 67 yards, two touchdowns. Frank Harris, the quarterback, eight carries, 32 yards, one touchdown. They ran 50 times on Illinois for 216 yards. Frank Harris, the quarterback, completed 20 out of 32 passes, 280 yards, one touchdown, and Illinois could not stop them. They couldn't do anything, and this is an indictment of Nebraska because UTSA kind of dominated them at the line of scrimmage, and Illinois dominated Nebraska at the line of scrimmage. Nebraska's in a whole mess of trouble. Whole mess of trouble. So I I don't remember if it was in our group chat, if I saw it on Twitter, or if I've had so many people reach out to me this weekend. A lot of assholes making fun of my team losing. That's fine. <laughs> that Fuck happens. you. <laughs> but like, but no, a lot of other people just talking and chatting and wanting to talk college football. We're just glad it's here. And someone in the ethos said this, and I can't get it out of my head after watching this game, and I, and I can't give credit for it. And and basically, the, the response was, is, you know, I watched a lot of that Illinois game because I liked Illinois in that game. And, and I thought they were going to have some hype, you know, coming out one and, and, and all this stuff. And they said, UTSA does everything Nebraska does. They just do it better than Nebraska. Yes. And I thought, holy shit, these offenses are really similar. One worked and one didn't work at all. How is it that Illinois played two teams with the first two games and kind of the offensive game plan was a lot alike? Yeah. And one team was able to be successful, and it's the dinky ass directional school from Texas. And the other team was not successful at all, and they're the big boy school in Nebraska. UTSA schedule lines up. They play Lamar next. They play Middle Tennessee after that, and then they play they kill at, those two teams. At, so I will be at the game at Memphis on yep. September 25th. UNLV, then at Western Kentucky, Rice at Louisiana Tech. Like they they are set up, and I think that might be your next P5 head coach uh, outside of like Billy Napier and whatnot, like Luke Fickle, all those. Uh, mm-hmm. But I don't know that Luke Fickle's going anywhere if Cincinnati's going to the to the Big 12. But that's not well, here nor there. The, the, the biggest thing is, is, yeah, Napier's had job offers and he hasn't taken any. I don't know what Napier's waiting on. He's I mean, wait, maybe he's, he's waiting, waiting on, on that LSU job to open up. Yeah, he's it waiting might, on a big one. It might come open soon. It, it really might. It really might. But that's that's what Napier's waiting on is a massive job. A Jeff big Trailer, job. Jeff Trailer could absolutely – because remember, he was uh, an assistant coach at Arkansas and took this job and completely flipped it. Completely so, flipped it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.